Morning, everyone. So I'd like to welcome Carl Louis to the Philatelic Society YouTube channel. Carl is the Managing Director of Coran Filler, which is part of the Global Philatelic Network. Carl himself is an avid collector and a member of the Association International des Experts en Philatelie, the AIEP. He, expert, he expertises Great Britain stamps of the Victorian era. 35 years ago, he created the Carl Louis Card Index, a census which details provenance on Great British philatelic material. This is a really exciting concept and we are delighted to have him here today to share more. Carl, welcome. So, can you tell us a little bit more about the Carl Louis Card Index? Hello, Isabel. Yes, with pleasure. So, to tell you a bit, a bit about the Carl Louis Card Index, we should go back to 1987. So, in this year, having just finished my studies of economics at the Cologne University, my first job was being a junior philatelist at Germany's oldest stamp auction house, Heinrich Köhler in Wiesbaden. This was the time when Heinrich Köhler had the John Boker collection of the German states for sale. And I was the lucky philatelist who was asked by the then owner, Volker Parten, to search for the provenances of the stamps and covers. In this moment, I had my first intensive experience with the card index, uh, with the card index census of German states. This was started to build up by the company's founder Heinrich Köhler in the 1920s. And my experience was, wow. I found it so fascinating to have the original stamps and covers on my desk and finding in the, car, in the Köhler card index register where and when they have been offered, in which collections they have been part of, or how many similar items existed and what prices they had realized in the past. My immediate thought, thought was such a census should be fantastic to have for my own collecting fee. GB Victoria issues. A few days later, I bought my first few hundred blank index cards to do it digitally in the computer was at the time not an option because simply the technical, uh, uh, it wasn't possible on a computer, especially for the storage uh, capacities for illustrations. Then I made hundreds of copies from the most relevant auction catalogs offering important GB collections, such as Colonel Bates, Seymour, McGowan, Sajjan, just to name a few. Then I cut out illustrations, added the individual lots description, affixed it on the index cards, added the auction house and the name of the collection, the auction date, the price, and the stamp catalog number, and sorted them all, but very structured, in index card boxes. This enlarged illustration, I have an illustration with you, with me, shows a typical sample of an index card. Catalog number, the source, the illustration, the description, and the starting price at the date. Over the last 35 years, my card index has grown to 155 boxes, each containing approximately 700 to 1,000 index cards, adding to a total of approximately 130,000 index cards with over 150,000 entries of GB Victorian items. Wow, that's amazing. And what kind of phil philatelic material is archived, Carl? It was very important to think about what kind of material should be included. You cannot archive every common single, uh, you cannot archive every common single use penny black because there are too many around. Finally, I compiled a list, which is, by the way, available on www.corinfila.ch. But let me outline for the Penny Black, as a sample, about what can be found in my card index. Mint Penny Blacks, from singles, pairs, and larger multiples. Or used Penny Blacks, with cancelled with red or Maltese courses. You won't find singles, pairs, or strips of three, but you will find everything from strips or blocks of four and larger. Penny blacks on cover, 
from frankings with four and more adhesives, all mixed frankings, May 1840, usages and foreign destination covers. Of course, essays and dye proofs and all rarer obliterations. Amazing. Well, this is really fascinating. Why did you create it and why is provenance so important? At the beginning, it was for me, in my definition, a tool for philatelic research, limited mainly for answers on rarity. Let's say how many similar items are known from a certain stamp, a cover or from a cancellation, what is the largest existing unused or used multiple? What is the largest franking of a stamp issue? But sometime later, I realized many more benefits for research. For example, is an item genuine, manipulated, or even faked? Uh, you, could, you can see the performance of prices and values over the years. And more and more important, especially in our days and for the future of philately, provenance as an indicator for philatelic importance of an item. Provenance is a seal of quality. As in art, provenance is an indispensable attribute. The further back a philatelic ped pedigree goes, the more coveted or converted the rarity becomes for collectors. I have also a few illustrations with me to, to show you the aspect, for example, of dangerous manipulations with a few examples. The first is the reperforated abnormal sixpence stem. You can see at the beginning the perforations at the top right were short, and later on the stamp had been reperforated. Very easy. I have also with me a penny black, a mint penny black from plate five. The same stamp on the right hand side, on the right hand side, it was the original condition with the cut into on the left side. Later on, the, the sheet margin has been cut and the left side has been remargined or um, repaired. So now it looks like a, a wonderful four margin stamp, but in fact, the left, the bottom left margin has been added. Or for example, another penny black. At the beginning, we saw, oh, you can see, yeah. At the beginning, we saw a mint block of five of the penny black from plate eight. A few years later, the top strip of three has been cut. And the top strip, strip of three has later been cut into singles. You can see the left-hand stand with the characteristic shaped margin at the top and the center stamp and the right stamp have been cut into singles and the top margin has been added. Or another nice example is uh, the largest franking of the one shilling. You can see one stamp was badly damaged or nearly missing. Later on, the same stamp was added. And finally, as of today, they have all been, the, the franking has been reduced from 18 to nine stamps. And it all looks beautiful, franked on the back, on the cover, and on the front. All adhesive has been soaked off. So these are just a few samples of the benefit of a card index where you get the chance to look into the past, how certain items have been uh, in the past and you can compare them how they are today. Gosh, I mean, it's, that's 
So fascinating. Thank you so much, Carl. And how do you find out the information? The by far most important sources are historic auction catalogs. The Royal Philatelic Society has a wonderful archive of auction catalogs, the early pioneer London auction houses like Plumridge's, Venton Bull and Cooper, Harmers, Robson Lowe, Christie's, and many, many other international sales. The more recent sales from about the 1970s, I've built up my own private, well sorted library for auction catalogs. This includes, of course, Spink, Cavendish, David Feldman, or our own company, companies like Corin Fehler, Heinrich Kröler, and many, many many, many more. So I remember very well in the last 30 years, whenever I was in London, I took a day off, I went to the Royal, I went down to the cellar in, in 41 Devonshire Place, and I came up with always with piles of auction catalogs <laughs> through the photocopy machine. And then I made six or seven hours uh, photocopies. And when I left at five o'clock when the Royal closed and I left the Royal, uh, then I had a pile of about 1,000 or 1,500 photocopies and much, and much enough work for the next weeks to, to work out and to bring all this on my, on my index cards for my card index. And how often do you update them? I mean, with over 130,000 index cards, how, how often do you update them? Um, the, individual, the individual cards which are being already produced they are not being updated, except for some manuscript notes like or, uh, originates from a larger multiples or has meanwhile been split up into smaller multiples. If an item comes up again in an auction, in, a, in, a, in an auction, in, let's say in the 2023 auction catalog, I never check if I have already recorded it. This would be too time consuming and I simply produce another index card for every item. It's much faster and time is everything. Um, and where is all this stored? This is my private card index and not from the company. And I, I have built it up in my free time. Um, so it is stored at my private home in Germany. It meanwhile occupies a full room I have more and more discussions with my wife, Birgit. Okay, a joke. She knows me before I started to build up my card index in 1987, and she accepts it as my life work from the beginning. <laughs> um, and um, obviously more and more things are going online now. Would you ever store the index online? I mean, if you were going to store this online, how long do you think it would take you to do this? This is a good question. I have thought about it the last 15 years. But facts, the fact is, storing the card index online would mean a restart from scratch. I regret I have only one life. And this one life is unfortunately too short for doing it again. So it will remain very traditional on paper index cards. Um, this has just been excellent. Thank you so much, Carl, for sharing this with us. And how do our audience now access the Carl Louis Card Index? Where do they go to find out more information? So every collector is invited to send me scans by email to my Corinfila email address, like louis at corinfila.ch, or you can send it to info at corinfila.ch. I frequently get such requests and it is always fun and joy for me to answer. And I don't ask money for it. It's just for joy and fun. The mail should also mention what question in regard of the item the collector wants to get an answer for. For example, how many similar items exist, if a provenance is available, I normally will answer over the then following weekend. Amazing. Oh, Carl, I can't thank you enough for your time and for sharing more um, with myself and our audience about the Carl Louis Card Index. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Isabel. Great pleasure. All the best. Bye. Bye.